Hi everyone, back to the more YouTube channel. It's Chris back with my rant stroke thought of the day. Uh, not a rant really, this one. More of a thought, a bit of a ponder and thought really. And it's all about our goalkeeper, Nick Pope. Now, before I get into this really, we've titled this is Pope OK. I mean, I just want to explain this nice and clearly up front before anybody goes mental in the comments, right? I love Nick Pope and Nick Pope has been a fantastic signing for Newcastle United since we signed him for £10 million from Burnley, which was an absolute steal in my opinion. Uh, he was vitally important in terms of progression to Cash United in this new look takeover and um, getting us to fourth in the Champions League. Brilliant goalkeeper, great shot stopper, commanded his back four, great communicator. I was stunned he wasn't in the England squad for the Euros, but, but going into this thought of the day that I've got about Nick Pope, this might explain the reasons why. So there's been lots of links to goalkeepers. Now, you know, Carrius has left the club already. The question marks are there over Dubravka. I, I would get rid of him because he can't save a Word document. Uh, his time is definitely done at the football club. So then you have to ask the question, are we going to sign a number two or are we signing a number one uh, goalkeeper here? Now, there's been links to a couple of goalkeepers in particular, certainly in the shapes of uh, Mama Dashfully, who we've covered in the channel before, and James Trafford. Um, now, the concern I have here with Nick Pope is... There has been some some stories going around. It could just be bullshit, to be honest with you. It could be just people making up nonsense, clickbait kind of stories or whatever. But the more you start to think about it, the more you start to do ponder and wonder about these things. So so we all know Nick Pope missed a huge part of last season. So he had a shoulder injury that he got on December the 2nd. He wasn't back till May the 2nd, 2024. So 152 days out, he missed 27 games for Newcastle United. And we missed him, there's no doubt about that at all. You know, I think... Not having Nick Pope in goal was, was a huge contributor to Newcastle not finishing higher at the table, maybe securing that Europa League football that we all craved um, and ended up with no European football at all because Dubravka clearly wasn't good enough. No matter the little glimpses and, and, and people wanting to turn back time, you know, like Cher, not the centre-half, the girl who sings, um, or the woman who sings. Um, and, you know, we realised Dubravka just wasn't wasn't good enough anymore, really. And, and some of the, the goals we conceded and, and the chances that we gave up and, you know, that just a lack of kind of calmness and, and, and stability and continuity in the back line was, was definitely because of the goalkeeper. So missing Nick Pope was a huge blow to the football club. You know, Nick Nick is 31 years old, uh, which is still young, uh, 32 now, sorry, still young in terms of goalkeeping stakes. But the stories they've been doing the rounds, whether you believe them or not, or want to give them credence or not. Now, I'm not saying they are true, but... It does beg the question. So he had a really, really bad shoulder injury last season. And, and and some of the rumblings going around is that the club aren't entirely sure that, you know, this this shoulder injury is, isn't going to kind of reoccur or, or it's not going to cause him any more problems down the line. Now, this kind of come around, around about a similar time that he was getting linked to return to Ipswich. Now, you kind of putting two and two together there. You might be making seven, you know, but you're putting two and two together and you're thinking to yourself, okay, he's been linked to Ipswich. Is that just a lazy link because of, you know, that's his club and all that other stuff and they come to the Premier League and looking for that experience? Um, or is there genuinely a concern within the halls and the corridors in Newcastle United that there is an issue with Nick Pope? And is he okay? Is he, is he you know, going to be 100% to start the season as the number one? So it kind of opens up that question of the goalkeeping situation. Now, that out of the two goalkeepers that be linked, I'm not going to go into stats. We've done all that already um, on individual videos that are on the channel. Check them out, guys, if you haven't already. But Mama Dashvili and James Trafford. Now, theoretically, both of them could be a number two goalkeeper, leaving Nick Pope as number one. And if the injury occurs, the other one can step in. I made my feelings quite clear on, on who I would rather prefer. Now, Mama Dashvili might be £30 million. Pounds, but I think you've got a ready-made replacement there, in, in, you know, for Nick Pope. You know, he's he's six foot six. He's he's quick off his line. You know, he's a great shot stop. He's really agile. You know, he, he, he can come out and close down angles. You know, he's do that sweeper keeper style that Nick Pope does. You know, he's good with his feet in terms of his delivery as well. He's got experience. He's played in the top league in terms of uh, La Liga against some real big teams and real serious attack and threat. And he's pulled off some ridiculous saves. I think he's got one of the highest save percentage ratios in Europe. Um, yes, he costs you 30 million quid. I think he's about 22 years old or something like that, or around about 23. So still a really, really young goalkeeper with all of his good years ahead of him. James Trafford, for me, I think, um, you know, he, he was built up off the back of the European Championships in the 21s where Anthony Gordon was, was the star man. Got a big move to, to Burnley. I thought that was maybe a move too quick for him. He'd, he'd, only, be in, uh, he'd only been in League One with Bolton. Previously had a great, great... Um, clean sheet record, whatever, but it was League One. Stepped at the Premier League, looked looked a bit weak, looked a bit soft, got bullied, got shoved around and set pieces. 
um, by some of the bigger, uglier, nastier teams. And then he ended up losing his, his spot to a really rank average goalkeeper. And that doesn't fill me full of confidence. You know, people are saying, oh, yeah, he could be the number two. But if this injury with Nick Pope resurfaces, and he obviously had an injury with his thumb as well, didn't his hand. So if the injuries resurface to Nick Pope, and we have Nick Pope missing for a huge chunk of the season, I'm not massively confident with James Trafford coming back in and being the goalkeeper. Some people have jumped to his defence to say, oh, well, remember Anthony Gordon? But that's different. You know, Anthony Gordon, I think, showed more in the Premier League in terms of his ability in the Premier League to, 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 to do what he does. Maybe, maybe not to the level that we thought he was going to get to, but you saw glimpses of it against Chelsea, against Manchester United, against us. You could see there was a player there. There was a reason Chelsea wanted them as well for 40 million quid. Um, James Trafford, to me, is maybe sure the Premier League is a step too far from right now. And, and even going to the Euros, you know, almost by default, I'll, I'll get back to what I think, you know, that again casts out into the mind of Pope's fitness, possibly. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. But I don't think James Trafford is is the answer for the um, for the second-choice goalkeeper. To me, I just think if we did miss Nick Pope for a huge chunk of the season, I would be really nervous about the lad getting shoved around uh, in the goal. I mean, yes, he might be playing in front of the... A better back four, which maybe will give more protection, and maybe shot stopping ability will will you know rub, you know kind of transfer over rather than his your know, strength as a goalkeeper. But we need both, in my opinion, we need both, and it'll be really interesting to see what the club do because if we do pull a trigger and go for Mohamed Ashley at thirty million quid, Aaron Ramsdale's been mentioned as well, and I think Arsenal want about thirty million quid for him. If he was available for fifty million, that's a snip. But then Aaron Ramsdale wants to be a number one goalkeeper. I think Mama Dashley probably wants to be a one one goalkeeper as well. But I could see Mama Dashley having a season as, as Pope's understudying if these injuries do reoccur. I think if Mama Dashley got in to the, the sticks, I don't think he'd go back out because I think he's that good of a goalkeeper. He, he would make that spot his own. And then obviously next season he would be our number one. So maybe I don't think we'll bring in both because if if if, if Bernie are wanting 50 to 20 million for James Trafford, we're not gonna drop 50 million quid on, on, on two goalkeepers, in my opinion, no chance whatsoever. I think there'll be if they spend money on a goalkeeper, then that goalkeeper may inevitably be our number one, be it this season or be it next season. And going back to Pope's injuries again, is that a reason he wasn't taken to the Euros as well? People can say match fitness and all that kind of stuff, but he came back in and, you know, he looked good. You know, he made a couple of good saves, especially that one from Ivan Tony. Is it just a lack of match fitness or does, does Southgate worry that maybe his shoulder won't hold up? Possibly or the Castle worry that his shoulder might not hold up if he played international football this summer and they want him fully rested and recovered for the season. But it's just something that's been on my mind. I'm not saying for one second, get rid of Nick Pope. If Nick Pope's our number one next season, I'll support him and love him as as, as all his fans would do. So I think he's an amazing goalkeeper and I really hope he comes back strong next season and this injury isn't an issue. But it is definitely something that's maybe worth thinking about and all these links to goalkeepers like Ramsdale, like Mama Dashley, they're number one goalkeepers in my opinion. So just makes you think maybe there is you know, kind of no smoke without fire type thing. So we'll just have to keep an eye on what happens with Nick Pope. I think over the transfer window, I still think he'll be our number one going into next season. And the club have got a big decision here, whether they go for James Trafford or Mama Dashley. I don't think Trafford's the answer. That's just my opinion. Let me know yours in the comments below, guys. We always like to hear from you. Just my thoughts on the situation. Like I say, no ITKs, nothing like that. I'm not giving credence to the stories if they are bullshit. But I just think it is something maybe worth, worth considering if this bad injury doesn't clear up for Nick Pope, is it is it a situation where Newcastle maybe need to accelerate that replacement, lickety split in this uh, transfer window? But let us know what you guys think in the comments below about that. We always like to hear from you. Smash subscribe as well if you haven't already. We'd love you to get us to 8K if we can before the season starts. Like the video too. It's all free content. If you want to be a member, there's an option below and you might get early access to videos just like this one. So feel free to click whichever one suits you best. We'll be back with some more Newcastle United content soon before the Euros kicks off. We'll be looking at uh, keeping an eye on the lads in the Euros as well and the Copper America. Busy summer before the season starts again. We'll be back soon with some more Newcastle United stuff. See you later, everybody.